soon after the Meet the Press event that was held yesterday at the Flagstaff House, where um, our own Patrick Asajman, Countryman Sungo, asked uh, His Excellency President Anadu whether um, what he was doing about the white paper that was issued um, after the Brazil 2014 World Cup fiasco, the Jamaica uh, Commission. Anadu um, answered that um, he really did not have anything to do. Uh, he did not even uh, remember that there was something like that. He says that the Jamaica Commission was not on his radar. Today we hear from the former uh, Minister for Youth and Sports, Neil Antivan Napoy, reacting to Nanado. He says he's very disappointed, but there's also a government reaction to that. We hear from the Deputy Youth and Sports Minister, Pius Enam Hajide, on this particular issue. We've got some also stories from the International Front, all for you here this afternoon. Stay tuned. All right, so it's a minute after three here on your superstation, Love 99.5 FM. And yesterday, um, at the end of the Meet the Press series that was held at the Flagstaff House, the talk of the day was um, the question that was posed by Patrick Osajman uh, about the, um, the Jamaica Commission, that uh, white paper that was issued by the Jamaica Commission, who looked into the 2014 Brazil World Cup fiasco. We all know what happened there when Ghana had to fly in millions of dollars to be paid to the Black Star players when they had a standoff with government. Uh, some of the players even demanded not to go and play the next game if they didn't get the money <clears throat> sorry and eventually when the money was paid some of the players were kissing the money here and there yeah, yesterday at the Middle Press series, um, Patrick Osajma posed that question to the, uh, His Excellency, the President, Anna Akufuado, and he said that, honestly, um, that issue was not his, on his radar. But he answered by saying that he's very sure that his minister, uh, that is uh, Honorable Isaac Esiama, will be on top of that issue. A lot of reaction has come uh, to um, that answer from His Excellency, the President. Some people are expressing disappointment. Some others are also saying that, look, there's a lot on the table of the President. That's how come he's got ministers around him who will be working on it. So today we'll get to know whether indeed the Ministry of Youth and Sports are doing something about it or not. But first of all, let's hear from Neil Lanty van der Poy. He is the former Minister for Youth and Sports. And um, uh, let's hear what he had to say. Initially, no, not initially, but he says that he's very disappointed in the answer uh, that came from the President. It's unfortunate and I'm highly disappointed in my very good friend, the President, and I'm going to go up to It means that for a whole year, his minister and also the Minister of Justice and Attorney General and the rest have not beefed the President on anything pertaining to the White Paper. Meanwhile, I specifically asked the Minister of Justice and Attorney General that question when she appeared before the Parliament Appointment Committee. I also asked the Minister, I also asked the Chief Justice. So I'm totally and utterly surprised about the President's answer. I have, and I can't, I can't believe that a president of the country who is touted to have an interest in sports and especially football will say that it is something that has never been on his radar and he has not even talked about it. It has not even come to his attention. I'm utterly shocked. It's unfortunate. I'm not surprised that uh, where sport and this in this country has drifted to. We, we stand so low uh, within a year. We, we can't do anything. We are not qualified for anything. We are not doing anything. I am surprised. Possibly the only thing that is driving now, as far as sports is concerned, is boxing. Because the vision of the John Drummond and Muhammad administration in constructing the Bukum Boxing Arena has all of a sudden, you know, catapulted boxing, and you see the strike boxing is making. Very well said by Mr. Former Minister. Your government was also in power two years after that white paper was issued. What did you do about it? Now, let's get a reaction from uh, the current government and uh, let's hear from the Deputy Minister for Youth and Sports in a direct uh, answer to what Neil Antivandapoy just said. Pius Enam Hajide is the Deputy Minister for Youth and Sports. And look, this white paper, the commission sat in 40, the year 2014. Mm -hmm. And that then the NDC was in power. 2015 and so on. Uh, you spoke about the uh, the honourable minister, former minister Neil Anti Van der Poel. Uh, he, is, uh, uh, he says he's expressing surprise. Surprise? He has had an opportunity. In fact, the, you can argue that uh, uh, maybe we are not committed to the to the processes or even the outcomes of that process because we didn't establish that committee, uh, that commission, and we didn't uh, the, we didn't even issue the white paper. At least the NDC. Uh, 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 did they put the commission together? They accepted their recommendations and they issued the this white morning, paper. Made a point so what did they do about it? No, he made a point that all, all these things you are talking about are under litigation and the the matter is in court. So then why is he yeah. now coming back to express surprise? It's hypocritical and partisan politics. People fail to tell the truth, and 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 I am surprised that. 
All right, so that was Pius Enam Hajide Ede, and uh, he was speaking to our colleague at Joy 99.7, um, um, just a while ago, Benedict Owusu, and um, he went on to say that um, they, I mean, this current government has complied with some of the recommendations from uh, the white paper that was issued by the Jamaica Commission. Let's take a listen to him. Well, we must also admire the honesty uh, and truthfulness with which His Excellency Nanado intends to govern this country. Mm -hmm. uh, the times of uh, propaganda and, and deceit uh, should make way for uh, the times where people can tell uh, the truth to the people that they, they are leading. Mm. And the president also emphatically made the point, again, that he was sure that his minister was on top of these issues. Mm -hmm. And for me, that is the critical takeaway, that the minister who is primarily responsible for implementing recommendations of the white paper, the president says that he was sure that the president was on uh, well, that the minister was on so are you guys on top of, of that issue are, what, what we, has been we, done we, we are so and, what has and, been and, done and, and i was going to to mm. get to it and so i'll come to that quickly and mm -hmm. so we should feel uh, rather encouraged okay that the president is convinced that he has a minister who is capable if the president knew that the, or if the president thought that his minister was not on top of the issues and was not uh, maybe act on them himself. Mm -hmm. But he, he said right there yesterday that he was sure that the minister was top of it. And to illustrate to you that, yes, we are on top of these matters at the ministry. And in fact, operating or implementing uh, the recommendations of the uh, Commission of Enquiry yeah. and the government white paper uh, to the extent that we can. And I say this because it is not all of the recommendations or the white paper that we can implement at this point mm -hmm. because large portions of the white paper are under litigation mm -hmm. in, court. in courts of yeah. competent jurisdiction and that imposes limitations on us to implement some of uh, the recommendations of the commission so and what's been done uh, so for now you would recall uh, my brother for instance uh, that it was recommended by uh, the, the commission and the white paper also uh, 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 takes, I mean, agrees to that position mm -hmm. that going forward, taking of supporters uh, outside of this country has to be redefined and looked at, and that in the current at the time, in that current state of uh, multiplicity of several supporter unions mm -hmm. and where government takes government funding. Uh, to support these supporter union projects of taking people outside of the jurisdiction to support mm -hmm. our national teams must be looked at. And you will notice that we have been to a lot of these uh, continental and global tournaments which we, also, we have also had. Though. Okay, so that was Adam Pius Adam Hajide for you, Deputy Minister for Youth and Sports. There's more on this particular, in, in this particular interview. We'll be playing them to you um, tomorrow and on Saturday morning when we sit down to bring you with uh, kickoff. And very interesting to listen to, but we'll be on this topic because um, it is worth discussing. Let's take a listen to finally what he had to say as well about some supporters that he took to India in some other competitions and why they did that and whether it complied with some of the rec uh, recommendations from the Jamaica Commission's report. Even yes, the World, World Cup, the even World we Cup have in also had a World Cup in India, which is sent supporters, okay? which we did send supporters. But why did we take them in in, in the the state of multiplicity of uh, supporter unions, which the Commission decried? No, they we are, put they all of them together mm -hmm. to form one national supporters union, which is which is a recommendation of of the the Commission. Mm -hmm. Again, instead of taking state funds to take supporters out, like was done in the past, in keeping with the recommendations, we also only facilitated and sought private support and sponsorship for the supporters' uh, project. Mm -hmm. And these are all in the, uh, 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 the the government white paper and the recommendations of the uh, Justice. But how about some of the recommendations about the last And stars. again, of course, if you even look at uh, bonuses payable mm -hmm. to the Black Stars, the Commission of Enquiry talks about it. Again, we have reviewed downwards bonuses payable to the Black Stars. The Black Stars no longer take $10,000 uh, per match winning bonus. But they recommended they that take, uh, we don't take. pay them in cash. But we still pay them no, in cash. No, we do not pay them in cash. We, we do not pay them in cash. That is, that's what I'm saying to you that I'm going to run through a long list of the things that we have done at our level of ministers and deputy ministers at the ministry. 
All right, so that was Pius and I'm Haji there. Uh, we have more on this, and so make it keep your dance logged on Love 99.5 FM. But as we speak now, um, the second semi final of the G8 competition is currently underway at the Cape Coast Stadium where Mediema Sporting Club are playing against Karela FC in the second semi final. The winner of that game will be playing against Accra Sufuk in the final of the G8 competition on Sunday at Cape Coast. Yesterday, uh, has qualified at the expense of Kumasi Asante Kotoko after a goalless drawn game, but they defeated Kotoko four goals to two in the final. Our penalty shootout. Now, let's do some other stories on the international front. It's absolutely Shakespearean. The Shakespeare got it wrong. It wasn't King Lear. It's King Leo. The assist from the Okay, and the uh, major discussion uh, on the transfer market now is the move uh, of Alexis Sanchez from Arsenal to um, that is uh, Manchester United. And Arsene Wenger has admitted that um, that deal could happen in the next 24 or 48 hours. And Alexis rejected, um, has revealed, um, Arsene Wenger has revealed that Alexis Sanchez rejected the maximum the club could offer in order to agree a huge £450,000 week deal at Manchester United. The Frenchman has confirmed that Sanchez, who was pictured driving into Arsenal's London Colony training uh, Colony training base this morning could seal his move to Old Trafford within the next 24 or 48 hours after United put together a package to make him the club's highest earner in Premier League history. But Mr. Wenger has also said a deal could happen or not. That is a story where you are well documented uh, apparently in the media, you know, so I have not a lot to, to uh, add to that. It can happen, it can as well not happen. Really? Still? Yeah. At that stage? Yeah, at that stage, yes. Do you think, yeah, can you tell us the latest on chance he could ever play in an Arsenal shirt again? Yes, of course. If it doesn't happen, he will play on Saturday. I think United want to do it in the next, within the next 24 hours. How likely do you think that is? Uh, I've worked on transfers for 30 years, you know, so it is likely to happen. But uh, any moment, any uh, minutes, things can break down. It's That's, that's what, how the transfer market is. So as long as it's not over the line, you have to accept that uh, it can as well not happen. It's never, these kind of things are never guaranteed. So of course, if it doesn't happen, you will play on Saturday. All right. Now, as an uh, Sanchez will take home a basic three hundred fifty thousand pound week plus image right of a hundred thousand pounds, making it four hundred fifty thousand pounds a week and a seven point five million uh, pound a year signing on fee for four years. Now, meanwhile, Wenger has confirmed that United's playmaker Henrik Mkhitaryan is on the verge of swapping clubs with uh, Sanchez by completing a move to the North London club. And Wenger confirmed money will not be an issue with Mkhitaryan, despite a midfielder looking to increase his wages to around two hundred thousand pounds a week. And obviously a part of the negotiations, it would seem, involves a player coming the other way. My understanding, yes. If it's uh, a possibility, it's because I like the player. We played many times against him uh, when he was at Dortmund, you know, and uh, he certainly appreciated the quality of our games and the way we play football. Certainly loves the club as well. The wages would not be a problem. The wages will definitely not be, not be a problem for Arsenal. And meanwhile, Arsenal is, is also working on deals for Dortmund striker um, Pierre Emerick Aubameyang and Bordeaux winger Malcolm. But Wenger refused to be drawn too much to either of the player. No, I have not, nothing to add to that. We are, as I told you, no, we are these kind of things. Uh, it's better when it's secret and uh, when you don't come out on it and uh, when you announce it when it's over the line and. Uh, Apart from a deal we just spoke about, Sanchez Mkhitaryan could happen, yes. Nothing else is uh, close. Character can be a very positive note and can be a very negative note, you know. So uh, I believe uh, overall you look at the achievement of a player during his career. When the career has been very positive, the character has been used in a positive way. All right, that was in description of Pierre Merrick Obama Young about his character. He said that he could be used in a positive or a negative way. Now, Borussia Dortmund have slammed disrespectful Arsenal boss Arsene Wenger for claiming Pierre Merrick Obama Young could fit in at the Premier League club. And they are not happy that Dortmund have issued a statement. They are claiming that there is no contact between the clubs over a transfer for the 28 year old. And Dortmund would like to make a statement in response to comments made by Arsene Wenger. We find this disrespectful to respond. Um, uh, questions to questions about players uh, from other other clubs um, that's coming from Dortmund and finally in tennis Roger Federer enjoyed uh, a kinder conditions of the night session as he beat Germany's Jan Leonard Straff in the Australian Open uh, he beat him he beat Straff 6-4 6-4 7-6 in a closer 
to 30 degrees Celsius. It looks very hot there in um, Australia. Now, Federer's Swiss uh, counterpart, Stan Warinka, was beaten in the second match since returning from knee surgery. He was beaten by uh, USA's Tennis Sun Green. And elsewhere, in another big game, Gael Monfils said he was dying on the court when Novak Djokovic fell conditions were right on the limit of safety as the temperature soared at the Australian Open and they had to stop the game to go in for some cold uh, towels over their heads before they could continue. And Djokovic finally winning 4 6 6, six, three, six, one, six three, to move on to the next stage of the competition. So that's it for sports. My name is Delali Atia. So now, um, Wow, there's a mouthful. Um, on Drive Talk, listen carefully. Now, let's see. I was working as an administrator, but have now been allocated extra responsibilities following my appointment as a programs officer in a local NGO. My new role involves a lot of travel outside town, many times with my boss. He has already made it clear that he fixed this so he can get opportunities away from the office. This culture is rampant in our organization and the ladies who refuse to pay to play ball are slowly put out of work. I am worried that if I reject his advances, there may be consequences. My husband suspects as much and is also somehow insecure about the whole thing. I'm caught up in this situation and don't know what to do. I want to keep my job but I know it will be difficult if I start if I stand my ground, even my colleagues are worried about me. I, <clears throat> he says that he has already made it clear that he fixed this to so he can get opportunities away from the office. This culture is rampant in our organization, and the ladies who refuse to play ball are slowly put out of work. What does it mean by if ladies play refuse to play the ball, Ruin? As in, if they refuse to dance, to if you don't team. conform to, yeah, if you don't conform, and, and what is the dance? What is the dance? What, what is it? So you sleep with such advances, yeah. Look, she needs to be a faithful wife. If you think that it's going to make you unfaithful to your husband, quit the job. It's as simple as that. But if you start asking me questions like this, then you, it means that you are interested in going to do what you want to do, what the man wants to do. You are interested. If you don't like it, you don't even comment about it. Stop. But when you start coming in with questions like this, as when you are doing obey, you can't do obey. Anyways, you, you can to join go, in you the want conversation. To go behind your husband and go and sleep with another man. It's a shame. Join in the conversation on any of our social media platforms as we hit the road with the city's biggest late afternoon show. Drive time and love. My name is Ruben. Good afternoon and welcome. Pack up your files in the office. Turn off the computer.